How's it going everybody? Today we'll discuss the problem reverse integer. This is an easy reader problem on lead code and it is asked in interviews of Facebook, Microsoft and Google. Today we'll look at what the problem is and discuss the approach to solve it. Finally, we'll analyze it for its runtime and space complexity. Let's look at the question here. Given a 32-bit signed integer, reverse digits of an integer. 32-bit signed integer ranges from negative 2 to the power of 31 to 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. Return 0 if reverse integer overflows. We'll look at what the 32-bit signed integer means in a bit, but first let's look at some examples. So if we are given an integer 4, 5, 6, and if we were to reverse it, the reverse of that number would be 6, 5, 4. If you're given a negative integer, negative 2, 3, 1, we'll take the negative sign first and then we'll just reverse the digits after it. So it will be negative 1, 2, and 3. And finally, if we're given a number that is single digit or all the digits are the same, then you simply just output the same number. So if you're given a number like 8, your output would also be 8. Let's look at what the 32-bit sign integer means. So whenever you store a number as an integer, underneath it's stored as a binary in your system. And to store it as a binary, it will allocate certain amount of space in your hard drive. To be precise, it allocates 32 bit of space in your hard drive for each of the integer that you define. And therefore, in any integer, you cannot store numbers that would exceed this limit. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. Also in this 32 bit range, the first bit is allocated for the sign because otherwise you would be only storing all the positive numbers and to account for negative numbers the first bit is allocated for the sign so if it's zero the sign of the number is positive and if it's one the sign of the number is negative this basically means that the number you can store in an integer would range anywhere from negative two billion to some positive two billion number you want to keep this in mind when you're reversing the integer so you don't exceed this limit and get an out of bound error. So let's look at what the approach is to solve this problem. Here you're given a number 4, 5, 6 and you need to reverse it. Now the way to do it would be taking one digit every time and putting it one next to each other in our solution. Let's look at how we'll do this. So in order to get 6 by itself, we'll need to mod the number given to us by 10 that will give us a remainder of 6. Then we'll multiply our solution by 10 which will make an additional space for 6 to be added in. Then we'll add the 6 into our solution. After that, since the 6 is already added in our solution, we don't need it in our number anymore. So we'll divide our number by 10 which will get rid of the 6. Then let's do this again for 5. We'll mod the number by 10 so it gives 5 as a remainder. Then we'll multiply the solution by 10 to make space for 5. Then we add our remainder 5 into our solution and then finally divide our number by 10. Let's do this again for 4. Mod the number by 10, multiply the solution by 10 and then add the remainder into our solution and then finally let's divide our number by 10. Now our number is 0. If our number is 0, which means all of the digits are now added to our solution and therefore this is our final answer. Let's go ahead and code this approach and see how it would look. Here we're given a function reverse. In here, let's first define our integer reverse and then we'll finally return this at the end. Then we'll go through each of the digits in our number. Therefore, we'll need a while loop and then we'll run it until the number itself is not equal to zero. Make sure that the while loop runs until the number does not equal zero because otherwise it would not account for negative numbers. Instead of this, we'll multiply our reverse by 10 to allocate space for our new digit. Then we'll mod the x by 10 and then we'll add the remainder into our reverse. And then finally, we'll divide our x by 10. So let's look at how we'll take care of the 32-bit sign integer. We'll first define an integer called max at the top and that would be equal to int max divided by 10. We're using int max here so that we don't have to worry about defining that 2 billion value here. Then in our while loop, we'll take the absolute value of reverse and then make sure that it's always less than max. Now notice that we are taking int max divided by 10. This is because in our while loop, we are comparing it to the max value before we multiply our reverse to 10. So for us to multiply the reverse to 10, we need to have extra space for it to be allocated. 
And if we ever hit the maximum or above it, we're just going to return zero before even adding or multiplying more stuff into it. And there you go. This is our code solution. Now let's go ahead and analyze this for its base and runtime complexity. So we have a while loop in our code, which goes through each of the digits. And this would scale linearly based on the number of digits that we have in our given integer. And therefore our runtime complexity would be O of N. For space complexity, we're using an integer reverse that will store all the digits just in the reverse order. And so if our given integer increases in size, our reverse integer would also scale up, but linearly. Therefore, space complexity would be O of N, which is linear.